Good morning everyone. Um, it's three o'clock in the afternoon at the moment. I'm a stupid person because even though I've allocated time off to have this game done properly, I cannot manage my time properly at this point and I keep working through at night till about four o'clock, five o'clock in the morning and then getting up at three o'clock in the afternoon. This is fucking stupid. I've got to get myself in a rhythm of doing a nine to five sort of thing, which I, I don't know, I keep resetting myself to that, but then it loops back around and I end up staying up late at night working on the game, which is good, but um, I end up staying up late at night and then sleeping through the afternoon the next day and repeating that. I'm uh, trying to get myself out of this situation here. I think making computer games, well, it's a lot like making a film. There's lots of work that has to go into this, a lot of work that people don't even see when they're looking at the final product. Some of this work isn't very exciting, it's quite tedious and dull. But at the end of the day, all this work combines together to make a piece of work that someone will enjoy. And to be honest, that is the best part of um, video game development is watching someone play your game when it's finished watch them enjoy what you've created that's the part that is the most interesting for me personally all right concept art now I like to do concept art on paper first then go through and color it um, do the line work and that sort of thing in Photoshop using a tablet now there's probably a lot of people out there that are way better than I am on a tablet and they can just do the whole thing start to finish in Photoshop. I'm just not that good at it. I'm not, I'm not a very good artist. I'm just a guy that kind of can dabble with it a bit. So for me, it ends up being better to doodle on paper, keep it real rough and then go through and really finish it up later. Now you might be thinking, if it's just yourself working on this, why are you bothering to do concept art? That's like a thing that big companies would do. Well, the simple fact is that it's a lot easier to do to experiment with changes and experiment with the overall look when it's really early on and all you're doing is basically drawing a little picture as opposed to later on in the game when you've actually got a fair amount of work already put into it. And experimenting there means redoing sprites and entire things like that. So, regardless of how big your team is, I think it's pretty important to do concepts. I'm just going to have a quick look at a couple of games, which are a pretty big inspiration. Um, both in terms of art style, gameplay, that sort of thing. These were on the Mega Drive, or Genesis as it's called, if you live in a... Well, most of the world, I think, isn't it? Um, Mega Drive, I think, might just be Australia, Europe, it doesn't matter. Anyway, I'm just going to load one up here. I'm going to have a look at, first of all... Flashback. The Quest for Identity. This is made by Delphine Software. They also made Another World, or Out of This World. The thing I love most about this game, like it's a great game in many respects, but you get to see a bit of it here actually, is the fucking amazing rotoscoping work on um, animation in this, so... Not so much... Well, like, yeah, it's, it's also present in the game itself, the actual animations of your main character and the enemies are awesome, but these fucking cutscenes... They are great. I mean, look at this. This still looks great today. I remember seeing this when I was a kid, and this was just amazing for that time. I remember going, whoa, okay, I don't think I ever actually, I don't think I ever actually owned this. I think I just rented it continuously from the video store back when you could do that. Now this game is a bit weird. It's a, I suppose it's a platformer. Always like the pit of death over here, if you ever played this game. You just try going left and oh, off you go. 
Um, yeah, it's a it's a platformer, but it's a it has a fair amount of combat and exploration to it as well. It's yeah, it's an odd beast. I love the movement. It's very deliberate movement. It's a lot like Prince of Persia, I suppose. Um, it has a similar feel to it. This, I'd say, is a bit better fleshed out than Prince of Persia was, but it's also you know, came much later too. Yeah, you can you can run around, move left and right, um, jump. You can't jump. You can jump up to ledges, but you can't do this little sideways jump. Um, but then you also have a weapon. But when you got the weapon out, you can't run or jump, which I find really, really interesting. And I always like this. Whenever you move, he puts a gun in that sort of position. And now if I press the button to shoot, he first draws the gun. And I, I always thought that was just awesome. And there's lots of really fluid animations. For example, you can uh, you can crouch, roll, and then pull your gun out halfway through the roll, which is that's just great. Oh. So yeah, it has this sort of deliberate quality to it. You often see where the enemies are on the screen, and then you're sort of standing up or below them, and you you sort of got to plan out. It's almost like a puzzle game, like the combat in this has a sort of puzzle-like quality to it. Hey, there we go. Look at that. Oh, a little quirk of this game is when you're close enough to them and you're crouching and shooting, you can't hit them, so you've got to stand up and whack them. But that's some excellent animation as well. It's like just an excuse to see these animations. is great. Yeah, the main thing I want to take from this game in into Longsword really is these um, animations. I'm going to be doing the animations for Longsword in much the same way, all rotoscoped. I love that. Just get a little rotoscoped animation whenever you pick anything up. Doesn't matter what it is, you just, yeah, it's great. You get that little diddling. All right, here we go with Golden Axe. A Golden Axe is a 2D brawler that is totally awesome. I think this was originally an arcade game, but um, I'm just familiar with the Mega Drive or Genesis version of it, really. And it had quite a few sequels. I was just playing the original one here, which I think is the one I owned. I might have owned Golden Axe 2. I think I had Golden Axe 2 on the PC as well, which is a very strange um, platform to put that on, especially in the early 90s. But, um, Anyway, well, Golden Axe has got three different characters to pick from. So you've got what's well, basically He-Man, you've got the scantily clad woman, which is very, very 90s, and then you've got the big badass dwarf dude with a big friggin' axe. So we're going to pick the dwarf because why would you pick anything else if you could pick a dude with a big fucking axe? And there he is. Look at the size of that axe. Amazing. So it's a pretty standard, um, standard-ish side-scrolling game. So you've got... The ability to attack, um, you can jump attack, you can pick guys up if you're close enough to them. And you've got your special attack, which in this case is magic, so you do this. And this varies between the characters, and it has different levels of power depending on what you picked up and that sort of thing. Um, I quite like, I don't know, it's, it doesn't, definitely doesn't look as good as Flashback, but I really, there's something about the art style on this that really appeals to me. I don't know, maybe it's just the, it might just be the colour palette. Um, I do notice that the... I didn't really notice that before. The characters themselves have a really aggressive shadowing around the outside of them. And you can see where they've just flipped the sprite. Because the shadow changes side. <laughs> That's... I've never noticed that before. <laughs> Alright. Now one thing that I really want to talk about in this is the AI. Or the pathing at least. So the enemies... Will purposely try to surround you like they just did there. So if you stand side on, oh, if they don't run at you from a distance, which they love to do, but that's another way for them to get around you. Here we go, I'm going to stand here like this. One's going to come from this way, another's going to come from the back. And that's the main thing, like the, the main thing the enemies do in Golden Axe, is they try to deliberately surround you in a really aggressive fashion, and they also commonly, if you're on the same sort of horizontal plane as them, and they're a fair distance away because you knocked them away like that, which plays really well together when you're fighting multiple guys. They'll get up, run at you, and give you the big sort of shoulder charge. 
Bloody hell. Fuck. This is what happens, so they just get around you like that and then you just get absolutely murdered. That's pretty much how this game works. Oh, and I'm really not sure what this guy is actually holding here. I always thought it just looked like a big bunch of grapes. I assume it's supposed to be some sort of like flail thing, but it's, yeah, it's a bit odd. There we go, so the, the colour palette swaps there for the sky. Stuff's getting a bit more interesting. I really like these big dudes, that um, they just stand there laughing at you until you finish off the little guys first. I always thought that was great. The beginning of a games project is always pretty much the same regardless of the scale. It's groundwork putting a lot of things together that'll make the rest of the game development easier to manage. So even the programming at this point, it's all what we call systems programming. Systems programming is doing the back end of the game. So managing things like movement, collision detection, like just drawing graphics on the screen in the right spot, that sort of thing. Other systems that will be used throughout the game as well, so it can vary depending on the sort of game you're doing. Um, for Longsword, there's, I've been doing a lot of collision detection, and it's really exciting stuff, um, but it will make the rest of development easier and will make for a better game. The longer you spend on these basic systems, the better the game is in the end. You need to work on the fundamentals and build up from them, and that's what get you a good product at the end of the day. After pre-production's done, you can do all the exciting bits. You can do the art, the music, the sound, everything. That's when you start to see progress sort of rapidly ramp up in terms of... in terms of how the game looks and feels. Um, at the moment, it looks and feels like nothing. But because I've done all the sort of basic work for it, Next month we'll see, suddenly it'll go from nothing to, you know, something that's somewhat playable to some aspect. At least, you know, like a room you can move around in, you might be able to fight a guy, you might be able to die, win, you know, that sort of thing. So, that's the, yeah, that's why you do this stage, but, yeah.